Story number one, at least he's trying. RFK. You know, one of my most treasured compliments that I ever got when I was hosting the Will Kane show on ESPN radio, which was an environment that often found listeners that may not be lockstep in agreement with me ideologically or politically, but would still listen largely because we had a commonality, a table around which to gather. And that was our love of sports. And one of my favorite compliments that I would get with this diverse dinner party where the main course was always the Dallas Cowboys or LeBron James, was that when we would go into the side dishes of politics or sports, race or culture, that one of the things that I would hear is, Will, I disagree with what you have to say, but I'm always interested in listening to why it is you believe what it is you believe. And they suggested the reason for that openness was, yes, in part my openness to hearing their point of view, but also the sense that I was trying. I am being real about arriving at my point of view. I'm not trying to hide facts. I'm not trying to, you know, play three-car Monty with the truth. I'm trying to drive forward directly in an honest fashion in some pursuit of the truth. That's not a compliment you can readily extend to very many politicians. It is a business centered around the idea of spin. Take the facts, take the stats, and twist and turn them, manipulate them into some shadow of the truth, some moral truth, some deeper truth, some agenda, your propaganda. We're surrounded by propaganda in modern American society. We have politicians who readily lie. We have mainstream media who not just echo, but amplify those lies. We're surrounded by lies in our social life. When we scroll through Instagram, we see the best version of everyone's vacation. We see the best version of everyone's workout. We see the best version of everyone's day. Everywhere we go, we are presented this curated, manipulated falsehood of a life. So when we encounter someone or something, some conversation that we think might be real, I mean, it's a dehydrated man walking across the Mojave, stumbling upon a glass of ice water. I think in there, you find the appeal of RFK Jr., I would offer to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. the same compliment that I was once extended. I don't agree with much of what he has to say. I don't share an ideology. I probably don't share solutions with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. But I appreciate my belief that he is trying honestly, earnestly to seek out the truth. RFK Jr. made an appearance last week on the Joe Rogan podcast on that podcast podcast, they discussed a host of issues. They discussed the COVID-19 vaccine, but they went further. They discussed vaccines in general. They talked about Wi-Fi, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. shared his opinion that Wi-Fi and 5G were having detrimental health effects on modern humans. They talked about chemicals in the food supply and in the water that are turning the frogs gay, which was, I believe, a beat pioneered by Alex Jones. They talked about a whole host of issues that you're not supposed to discuss. They talked about a whole litany of subjects that are outside the box. And I don't know. I don't know if RFK Jr. is right. I don't know if he's correct in his assessment of all of these issues, but I do get the sense that he's thinking, that he's thoughtful, that he's trying, that he's searching for the truth. Look, even that, I will tell you, I don't say with 100% confidence. I have some of my own questions about RFK Jr. I wonder how he could go through such a conversion, meaning 
I've seen him speak as adamantly about climate change as I've seen him speak about vaccines. I believe I've seen him say that climate deniers should be thrown in jail. So I would have some serious questions about the honesty of his conversion away from that position about his pursuit of the truth. But I wouldn't shout him down. I wouldn't yell for censorship. I wouldn't simply mock him. In the wake of that interview with Joe Rogan, that is primarily what you saw in the form of a rebuttal all across social media and in to the extent it was addressed or acknowledged by mainstream media. It was really just met with derision, with smirks, with sneering, with smugness, with mockery. It's the same tool. It's the same attitude. It's the same position that we've seen from individuals and institutions in this country for the past five plus years that simply, for most, no longer works and in fact explains the potential appeal of someone like RFK Jr. Whatever the issue when it came to COVID, vaccine efficacy, the ability of the vaccine to stop transmission, the need for two, three, four, five boosters, the back and forth recommendation of whether or not we should wear masks, the need, the cost benefit analysis on a vaccine for our children, the lockdown of our schools, election integrity, a whole host of issues when it comes to Donald Trump. We were offered up not reason. We were offered up not persuasion. We were offered up dogma, sloganeering. We were offered up dicta. Do this. This is what is dictated. And no question the science. If anyone dared to step out of line, if anyone dared to, in fact, question the science, if anyone dared to question the slogan, they were censored. They were tossed out of the conversation, as was Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So it isn't met today, or it isn't a surprise today, to see that same rhetorical trick, that same sleight of hand, that same dishonesty used as a rebuttal for RFK Jr. Is he a crackpot? Is he a conspiracy theorist? Is he a grifter? Why don't you try laying out your case instead of simply offering up an ad hominem attack and pine away for the days in which you could silence men like RFK? There is a desire in this country, I believe, after having been manipulated so consistently, to simply see an honest broker, to simply look for someone who's trying, for someone who is earnest. I'm not sure that qualifies one for president. I'm not sure that's enough. I'm not even sure it's a necessary but sufficient component. There's so many other requirements to being president of the United States. Good judgment, Machiavellian strategy. Humility. But I don't know that the nation right now can turn to anyone else. Anyone else has a friend, anyone else has a leader who doesn't at least offer them the pretense of authenticity. I simply can't scroll through my Twitter feed and take seriously anyone anymore whose only tool has been for the past decade mockery, criticism, derision, and censorship. I can't take them seriously. And does that sign me up once again to be labeled a conspiracy theorist? Well, so be it. Because conspiracy theorists, as we well know at this point, well, they're on a hot one. Conspiracy theorists are on a good run. I want to see conversations like that between Joe Rogan and RFK Jr. I want to see one of the leaders of the capital science, Peter Hotez, who has been the target of 
an online campaign designed to bring him onto the Joe Rogan podcast to debate RFK Jr. after years of telling people that you're, you're going to need two boosters. No, it turns out you're going to need three boosters. Sorry, not quite enough. As it, as it turns out, you're going to need four boosters. And by the way, your children should be boosted. I want to see someone like Peter Hotez brought into the debate. And once again, it simply discredits you if you say, and they are saying this today, that you can't debate people like RFK Jr. I get it. I, I understand the point that he is capable of rattling off study after study after study. And I don't know the veracity of all those studies. But I do know that you don't arrive at the truth through silence and darkness. You arrive at the truth through debate and light, through transparency, through courage, through the battle of ideas. I want to see Peter Hotez take on RFK Jr. And if everyone's position, if the is so strong, if the derision is so warranted, surely there's some champion, surely there's some hero that you can marshal. Surely there is some opponent to RFK Jr. that you can challenge to enter the arena and readily make a fool of the man you find so readily the target of your smug mockery. But debate too, debate like persuasion, debate like reason, debate like transparency is beneath our ministers of propaganda, is beneath our moral betters, beneath those who for everything that might challenge their worldview and point of view is a conspiracy theory. Now we need more RFK juniors. We need more honesty, more earnestness. We need more people trying to find the truth. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now.